What we do for Mission Weeks for young people at St. Mellon Sophie Parish is immerse them in poverty here in the state of Washington and the most painful poverty to encounter is the poverty of migrant workers, seasonal farm workers here in the state of Washington. We do two weeks, a week in the Yakima Valley and a week in the Skagit Valley, working with food banks and working in the migrant camps. So it's a chance to immerse young people in the reality of what the church teaches about the poor and how we are to respond to them, and it's a chance for young people to find out how big their hearts are. <laughs> for the week in the Yakima Valley in Sunnyside, the older kids, the 11th and 12th graders, work in the morning at a program called Nuestra Casa, and we help teach English as a second language. We serve Spanish-speaking immigrant women and their families. We have ESL classes. We also have a Spanish literacy, citizenship, and driver's ed. You're going to be helping in the ESL classes. They responded very favorably. I, I think they enjoyed it, and I think they made friends. I am fine. Thank you for your patience. Game with the rain and watch the spider around. That record I own, that record. They're going to be trying to beat that record for the rest of their life. Your record, 32 chairs. In the afternoons, we drive down to Pasco, Washington, in the Tri-Cities area, and work with secular Franciscans and the St. Vincent de Paul Society, helping them with their thrift store and the food bank for the farm workers in the Yakima Valley. Carol, tell me what you think of these kids. They're awesome. They're doing a great job. Every year they come over the last two years, and both times they've done a great job. Yesterday we were glad to greet the kids from St. Madeline Sophie. We appreciate their coming every year. And they came to St. Patrick's Parish and made sack lunches comprised of pudding, applesauce, napkin, spoon, and cookies, peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, which were bagged in Ziplocs and rebagged in the loaf bag. We like to kind of consider this a prayer, so every sandwich they make is just a little prayer that gets stuck in another bag that's a prayer. It's made like a gift. You're a precious jewel. Too. That's it. Today, Wednesday, the kids from Madeline Sophie are here and they are distributing them to the people as they come through the food line. They're great. They're so cooperative. They're careful. The kids did a wonderful job. They always do. Well, I hope it continues. <laughs> We really appreciate the help. This is really, truly a blessing for us. The week in the Skagit Valley, we work with Jose Ortiz. We're working with the St. Charles Food Bank, the Tri Parish Food Bank. The importance of this program is not just serving the poor, but I think uh, for our local community to recognize poverty in our own backyard. We're teaching the younger generation to, to understand that there's poverty and there's needs in our own community without having to go somewhere else. We're just planting a small seed, like, you know, somebody planted a small seed in us. I know for some of them, you know, this is uh, a life-changing experience like it was for me. You know, that's why I'm still here. I still, every day, I learn something from the people we help, but also from the kids. So it's a life-changing experience for the kids. I'm happy where I'm at, and I would continue to do this the rest of my life. We have crafts and games that we take out to the migrant camps in the afternoon, fiesta, piñatas. Just a chance to meet uh, the little ones who are left in the camps during the day because their parents can't get them to daycare and they're too young to pick in the fields. What the kids encounter when they visit the camp is really desperate poverty.
Uh, they encounter homes, really rooms where an entire family will live, anywhere from six to 12 people living in one room. Maybe a bare light bulb, maybe a hot plate to cook on. Have you guys never had them? Uh -huh. The home that is home for a migrant worker family is often smaller than a bedroom that one of these young people might have back in their home. It's a chance to encounter poverty up close and see what that really means instead of just reading about it in a book or watching it on television. Well, we used to come here, work, you know, then go back to Texas again and then come back you know, every year. And then we ended up staying here. So I'm here alone. Yeah. And I, I had this bad accident. I can't even, can't hardly walk. It goes for everybody, all your kids. Don't miss the school, and just try to be something in your life, okay? So you guys do have to work in the fields. We're in the Skagit Valley helping out migrant workers, children, for uh, Mission Week. We fed kids whose parents were picking in the fields, and then we handed out food to the parents at the weekly food bank. I got, like, some emotional, you know, Insurance, okay. I guess. All right, think about it more. <laughs> Nolan, what'd you get out of it? <laughs> um, I learned that you don't have to go to third world countries to find impoverished people. They're in our own backyard. You know, I made some friends with the migrant workers. I kind of understood their plight more now. I definitely have a different perception. I feel changed after this experience. Yeah, it was pretty fun. You have to stop and look at the kids and how happy they are and that you're there and visiting them. It's a lot of fun and you should do it. Yeah, it makes you feel better about yourself. We need your prayers. We need financial support to help young people who need scholarships to go to this to cover the costs. We need financial support to help us put food in the food bank. We need young people to attend the retreat and we need parents to help chaperone the week. Why do I do this? I do this because the gospel compels us to do it. It's a chance to take some intense focused time in the summer to be the hands, the feet, the eyes of Christ in the world. So that's why I do it.